Welcome back to another Bold Biz Chats. We've got some, um, we've got, uh, we have got three dynamic women here today. And yes, that the third one would be me. So I am considering myself as being dynamic, but we've got three dynamic women here today. I'm kicking off my co-hosting series today with the lovely Kate Gardner. Katie Poo, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Oh my God. Back to doing radio with you. It's been too I, long. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't feel like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz and need a little bit of elbow grease. I think you'll be fine, but you know, we we could always get you a little bit of a uh, little bit of grease there because it has been a while. I, I it's boy. been a year. It's been over a year. Oh my goodness gracious! Well, welcome back to Bold Radio Station <laughs> <and> my show. <laughs> Thank you. It is great to be back with you for one month, so I can drive you insane for one month. Oh, gosh, Kate, you don't have to come to my show to drive me insane. <laughs> no, so, you... any... I, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, no, I can do that on our personal chats. <laughs> yes, we can in our Skype calls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, with all that being said, um, everyone that is listening, I hope you really understand that um, Kate, Kate and I met um, in a book, an anthology, uh, a few years ago, about four four or five years ago. I've lost, I've lost track. I'm not good with... Uh, timelines like that and um we became colleagues and friends and partners and we're always bouncing ideas off of each other and always trying to figure out how we can partner up with things and so kate and i've decided to gray our own hair a little bit and partner up with one last book and kate it's you know i just did a couple weeks ago i just hosted a garage sale at my house and i sent my husband i'm like really I never, I'm not doing that again. And that's the same thing with this last book that we are aiming to get launched and up and out the door here in December of this year is it will be Kate and my last book that we are leading. So ladies, jump on in. If you're interested, reach out to us. But a big shout out to the Bold Radio Station um, <clears throat> team. They are a motley crew. I love them all to death. I, I can never speak highly enough about them. We've got Nesha and Damian, our producers, and Inga, our director of operations. They really work their tushies off. They work their butts off to get these shows up and out the door. Uh they they put up with a lot of antics from um, myself, so to speak. And now Nesha, our producer, gets to put up with Kate and I. And our guest today, Kate, is a woman that uh, came to Bold Radio not too long ago. Um, I had no idea who Anne was. And she's one of our um, hosts. And she's a dynamic woman um, in leadership. She's all about um, leadership and a lot more, too, uh, I must say. Because I've had the opportunity to sit down and meet her face-to-face when she was in Detroit here a couple weeks ago. Um, and she's a really neat lady. So, But before we bring Anne out, Kate, what's going on with you? Um, I, the magazine is going on with me. Um, I'm also consulting other people to actually launch and publish, well, publish and launch their own book series now. So the people within the Missing Peace book series is actually stepping up and they're starting their own publishing companies, which is truly amazing. So the magazine is going on and so is our book project, Kim. So I'm really looking forward to all of that. Before this radio station actually started, radio station, I mean radio show, <laughs> before this radio show actually started, I put a post out on Facebook asking the public if they would ha- want any questions asking while we're, while we're on air and while we've got this chance to really talk before we actually bring in our first guest. So Sarah actually posted a question on the post saying, how do you increase your Facebook following? So I'm going to say my part and then I'll let Kim say her part because we both worked on Facebook and the online industry for a number of years to the point that we've got gray hair. Okay. So um, <laughs> with a Facebook business page, my advice would be to use Facebook ads because I do that and it grew my page very rapidly at a very low budget cost. And also bringing your page to life with video and having rich content that you are then sharing amongst other pages and other groom, other communities so that it's actually coming through your page and you're getting a bigger reach. Because the more that you have your post reaching by sharing it through your profile, by sharing it through communities, by sharing it wherever else you can share it, 
and you're giving rich content out and you're bringing your page to life, people will then have the like, no trust factor with you and they want to know more about you, which then when they go to your page, they will then go to your website and they will check it all out. So basically the worldwide video challenge that you're involved in right now, Sarah, that is a great way to go. Put them videos through your Facebook page and then share them in your communities. I hope this helps and answers your question. Kim, what do you say? I also, too, because we do, um, you know, we use Facebook both uh, for personal and uh, professional. Don't forget to show a personal side of yourself um, as well, because it just keeps us looking that we are real human beings there through that screen. And just to really, I'm a big believer in social media because, first of all, number one, it is free. Number two, it is a free marketing tool. Number three, it is free. Did I say that it is free? And it is a marketing <laughs> tool. And we need to use that marketing tool as uh, business owners. Um, however, it, do, it is very um, time involved. So make sure you get yourself a scheduler if you can't always be online and um, or if you're not always at your desk checking things like that. So And make sure you stay interactive. That's how you can build a presence on Facebook. Uh, one of my things on Facebook is um, when someone will post a question or post a comment and they want us all to comment in their thread and then you don't see that person come back around Mm. so it's like hello kate come on over hello and and kate and our guest come on over my house for dinner but i'm not going to converse it's like it's social media make sure you swing back around and you know thank everybody or you know do something for people taking the time um and engaging in something that you post up there so engage you know if you want people to engage come back around and engage yourself too so those are some great little tips and i love the video um piece because um we've become such a, a society of um, screens. We're a screen society and um, people don't get to see us all the time. They hear our voices like on radio, but they don't get to get to see us all the time. So I like that video thing. Yeah. I resist the video thing because a lot of times I don't have makeup on and then that means I have to go upstairs and put makeup on. So I resist the video thing. So that's a, that's a little side of me I just shared. But um, anything else, Kate? Yes, you do have a magazine that will be launching in 2017. Hop on board, ladies. Um, Kate, I, I can verify. Um, Kate, you crack me up. When was it? A couple months ago you decided to add to your business a magazine? How many months has it been? It's what, been three months? Um, it, no, it was about about two months ago I actually came up with the idea and I've never ever done a magazine for art in my entire life so I, I act on my dreams I act on my visions so I had the vision I had the dream and it wouldn't leave me alone for three days so I placed a, a person out to the world I said to people do you think this is a great idea I'm going to do a magazine do you think it's a good idea please please tell me it's a good idea <laughs> so they um, they told me they said go for it so I went for it you know you didn't have to tell me twice um, Um, I've been learning graphic design for the past five weeks. I completely laid out all the magazine, all the contents, all everything. And I'd never, ever done a magazine before. And when I stood back, I actually shocked myself that I had pushed myself to a whole new level. And it was just astounding what I'd actually created so it's it is amazing when we push ourselves and really see what we can achieve by pushing ourselves a bit further forward so the magazine is actually being created now and it's open to writers writers are um are going are being interviewed and accepted and being brought on board as well as being able to advertise as well as being able to be involved with the magazine on a yearly basis so that you're always in every issue um it's launching in january and the aim of the game is to have two issues complete by January the 17th. So we launch and then we are creating one every month after that. So, And, and what's the premise of the uh, magazine, Kate? What's the what, sorry? The premise of the magazine. What's the basis of the magazine? It's a... So it- it is a self discover st- I can't even talk. It is a self discovery <laughs> interactive digital magazine that comes to life. So it's not just a normal print magazine. This comes to life. It has audio embedded, video embedded. It is like a mini little coaching program and people are going to be able to download sheets. They're going to be able to set goals. They're going to be able to get clarity. They're going to go through a process of all different kinds of subjects within the self discovery journey. 
where they can actually really do powerful exercises as well. So it's all interactive. It's a bridge to um, actually bring together the coaches and the readers as well because the coach gets to present themselves, they get to teach, they get to show the world exactly what they can do and what solutions they create can create and it's all getting advertised on an advertising platform with over 300,000 people plus my social media following as well so you're looking at nearly 49,000 people and then plus everybody else that's participating in the magazine will also have a following so it's a big huge collab collaboration but my whole point of asking um when you um because i it was savvy to when you thought of this and it was nagging at you, so to speak, when the universe kept elbowing you, so to speak, and then you decided to do this. I, I want everybody that's a business owner that's listening here that Kate is doing behind the scenes some due diligence research, some work, some learning preparation, I call the strategies, processes are getting implemented into place so that she can launch this properly and not be behind the eight ball, so to speak, chasing her tail, like, you know, like the gerbil in, in the wheel and being overwhelmed and, and feeling like a wet blanket is being thrown over her. She's doing her planning, her processes. And I work with a lot of women business owners on planning and, and implementing processes. And they, I mean, when I start talking about things, like that they're like ooh, really and I know that processes and strategies and planning is not sexy but I want to tell you what ladies it gives you more time gives you more freedom it um, it decreases overwhelm and increases confidence when we decide to take something on and really learn about it dot our eyes cross our teeth so to speak before you get to that launch day so kudos to you um, Kate and I'm excited for you and you know Maybe one day I hope I can be on the cover. Who knows? Hint, hint. Anyways, so, <laughs> so anyways, enough of this. Um, let real quickly before we bring Anne out, I want everybody to take a moment. If you own a dog, these this is the best leash in the world. Um, it has been designed by um, Grace, my dog trainers, uh, Ray. Him and his wife make these leashes. His business is called Razor K. Nine. So go to Razor K and the number nine dot com and take a look at these custom made super grip dog leash. Best dog leash there is out there. They are waterproof. They will never rot. Awesome grip, wet or dry. And I walk in all sorts of weather. So and I've got, you know, Grace is 55 pounds. She sees a bunny and boy pulls me. These leash do not slip through my hand. Um, they can be washed in soap and water pre- to prevent germs. I love this leash. If you are a dog owner, please go to Ray's website and invest the $36 plus shipping and handling for him to send you one of these leashes. It is um, a USA biothane is the high quality um, material. Um, Get yourself this leash if you are a dog owner. I love it. Again, it's www.razork9.com. Come and swing on by. But let's bring Anne out. Um, uh, Anne, welcome to the show today. How are you? I'm great. And thanks for having me, Kim. I've just really been enjoying your conversation with Kate, and you're both amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, come join the party, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Before we start jumping in, uh, I want to say this live out loud and on the air. Um, Ann and I, um, Ann is a bold radio station uh, host, and she only, Ann, you're about, what, four hours uh, north of me in Canada? I mean, you're about, it's about a three, four hour drive. Isn't this your way for me? It is, but east. East. Oh, East, that's right. (laughs) That's right. East. I don't know why I want to place Canada north of me for some odd reason. You're right. It is East. And um, Anne was uh, working with some clients here in the Detroit area a few weeks ago and um, was gracious enough to to stay the night because I was coming back from Costa Rica and I jumped up the next morning and drove over to her hotel and we sat down and uh, we had quite the endurance um, breakfast that morning and uh, had such a wonderful time. Um, you know, getting into the world's um, uh, problems and coming up with some solutions, some solutions with you, and 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 laughing and having a grand old time that day. So um, that was a lot of fun. But 
I, I want everyone to understand that, uh, Anne, you have a, a very beautiful, dynamic, diverse um, background. I mean, you have really pioneered through some cutting edge of technology with your businesses and stuff like that, because you shared that, a lot of that with me that day. So before we move forward, if you wouldn't mind, please tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, have you got a couple of days? <laughs> this could be yes. a long story or a short story. So, <laughs> yes, I, I was born in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and grew up in a large family. I'm the eldest of six. My father was an entrepreneur, and I suppose that you could argue that entrepreneurial uh, genetics are part of my makeup. I know that I needed to be in charge from a very young age, and it was a result of that needing to be in control, believing that I knew a better way, and being frustrated when other people didn't agree with me <laughs> that led me to start my business, my primary business, nearly 30 years ago. We're just coming up to our 29th anniversary, so we'll, next year, 2017, will be the 30th year. That's 30 years of having the same boss. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I must tell you, you know, in all humility, she has improved with time. Mm, I like that. In all humility, she has improved with time. I like that. Mm. So my primary business is marketing research consulting, which means that we find out why people buy things, why they buy things more than once, why they choose one particular brand over another. And more recently, we've been working in the business to business arena, where we work with companies who sell their goods and services to other companies as opposed to consumer products. And over the course of the nearly 30 years, my company has had to remake itself, reinvent itself, to respond to ever-changing market conditions, and most particularly to advances in technology. So when I started this business, computers were just making their entry to the business world. And by that, I mean, they were, we were just uh, starting to see people with computers on their desks. So at the beginning of my career as the president and CEO of the Dunvegan Group, one of my first major purchases was a Macintosh Plus and a laser printer and an external hard drive now wait for this, 20 megabytes. <laughs> and you're dating yourself. <laughs> well, I gave you the 30-year benchmark. Right? Yes, that's right. So the record, just to put that in context, the recording from today's radio show, this one show, will be about 20 megabytes. <laughs> we got to start somewhere, right? Well, yes. And so over the course of you know, the, the evolution of my business, not only did we have to adopt computer technology and, and then bring our own solutions to the table, but we actually developed our own software so that we could deliver our particular solution more efficiently. And, you know, today that solution lives in the cloud, but somewhere along the line there we were operating with a network of servers of our own and you know if, really we've we've been embroiled in adoption constant adoption learning um, abandoning adopting something new making mistakes finding out that what we thought could work didn't work it doesn't doesn't do this or it doesn't do that so along with our clients we've been able to learn how best to interact with the marketplace and to ensure that we have current information from the clients about what their struggles are and how 
companies can help to solve those problems, bring solutions, streamline, introduce processes and procedures, as you have talked about, Kim, that will streamline the, uh, you know, the productivity of their organization and help them to do a, an ever better job of serving their customers. Yeah, that's the bottom line, you know, and th- that um, that enhanceness of that um, productivity is uh, it's all about that. You know, it's it's the, the better servicing of customers, making more money, growing the business. You know, and I, 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 Kate, I don't know if you come across this with clients and stuff when you're consulting, but you know, I these women are like, oh, processes, and I'm like, processes, <laughs> and you, let me tell you, I could not have had this conversation ten years ago. Processes are sexy. I mean, to me, they're saying because you know why? They free me up. I don't feel so overwhelmed, you know, when you have processes set in place, when you're organized and you've got the goals and you're implementing and, you know, it, it, and it allows you that time to take a look at things and debrief and go, okay, this is working great, but how can, as we evolve and grow, how can we be better? Yeah, definitely. If you don't set the foundations in the first place, then you're going to get bitten on the backside so many times along your journey. Because I've learned this from experience when I've set out before. I mean, what, four and a half years ago when I set out in the online industry and I was a virgin to online business, what happened was, you know, if I'd have took the time to put them processes in place, to put the foundations in place, I wouldn't have been bitten half as many times as I would have. And I could have actually just tightened and tweaked my old process along the journey so it could have been even better but no I didn't because we don't know when we when we don't know we don't know so when I first hit the online industry I didn't have the time I didn't take the time to process I didn't take the time to know all this because I was unexperienced and all the experiences along that journey are exactly what makes me now before I even launch anything in the world it, it take I take my time to process process everything, to put the foundations in, to write the agreements, write the policies, write the boundaries before I even launch anything. You know, that's that's a really good point, um, you know, because Anne, you know, simply, you know, d- did the benchmark, and when you came out, you know, the 30 years, and then you're talking about, you know, where we started back with the computers, and you were talking, and I, I was just smiling, thinking, God, do you remember how bulky those things were? Now we're like these tiny little thin screens. It's amazing how things evolve and grow, you know? Do you remember how... I mean, things that were so big and bulky back then. Think back to the first, first cell phone and all that stuff, but... You know, it's, um, we're here, we, we are supposed to be here for the journey. We're supposed to be here for the endurance, for the long run. And when we get into this instantaneous get rich quick um, mentality of the four second Google society that we live in, I don't understand how people feel that their businesses can actually sustain any ebb and flows and ups and downs and ins and outs and changes and, you know, turning left instead of right and right instead of left or whatever, whatever analogy you want to use, Um, you know, and then the burnout sets in and the overwhelm starts really taking over. It's we're supposed to be here for longevity, period. The, the, the business is longevity. And, um, and I know you have weathered, you know, I'll, uh, <laughs> in the third, you have, well, hey, she laughs. And I, the, yes. this, is what, this is what I love about you, Anne, is your um, beautiful uh, sense of humor. But, boy, you've weathered a lot of, I mean, you have looked at laying people off and, in a very short amount of time because of what was happening. I mean, you have weathered a lot. And that's true. And I do speak about, you know, the journey as being the ups and the downs and the downs and the ups. And sometimes we all, you know, step in potholes. And at other times we step in what I call cow patties, you know, (laughs) those camouflaged, (laughs) nasty situations that, don't even smell until you step in them. Anyway, yes, I have. And there's, there's a lot that goes into that survival of an organization, the, the resilience that's required when you're the leader of the organization. And it is those experiences combined with you know, the, the discussions, the, the commentary, 
and the advice of other people around me that helped to form the foundation of the decision to start the Acacia Institute, Mm -hmm. which is our women's leadership training and development organization that is going to be preparing exceptional women leaders for this 21st century. And we, and we are rolling along. So this is, this is what I consider to be my legacy of learning. All that I have learned, I can bring to bear and share, and I can engage other women leaders to share their experiences as well to equip women with not only skills and abilities, but confidence, the self-confidence to step up. You know, this is a um, this is a very. I know for Kate too. This is a very uh, um, um, passionate, intimate subject uh, with the three of us, being that we are all, all women, and the fact that you have birthed um, this beautiful institute, Anne. Uh, and I want to hear more about that too, as well. I want you to share more about that with the listeners. But um, is supporting women. And, and let's say this out loud. We don't come through the birth canal with the skills to be a leader. These are learned behaviors. These are learned skills. And I, and I love it that what you said is for women to step up instead of keep stepping down or bowing down or kicking down another woman is stepping up. Well, exactly. And, you know, there, there's some good anthropological evidence to support the competition between women or the necessity of competition between women from ages gone by, that in order for us to perpetuate our species, we had to compete for the attentions of the opposite sex. And we had to push aside other females of our species. But ladies, it is now 2016. And those conditions no longer exist, nor have they for perhaps, I'll I'll just say perhaps 100 years. It's time for us to link arms and work together to bring our strengths and our brilliance to the world. Without our voices in the halls of the leaders, we are withholding from the human race half of the intellect, half of the thinking ability, half of the solutions. I read recently uh, just a, a devastating comment that went like this. If the cure for cancer resides in the brain of a woman, we might not find it. Mm. And I don't mean that the solution is in there in some little package. What I mean is that a woman is every bit as likely to be able to find that solution as any of her male counterparts. But unless we engage women, not only in the studies of science, technology, engineering, and math, but in the leadership of organizations that pursue those solutions, we will not come up with the very best of solutions possible. You know, you shared that with me, um, that comment, if um, the cure for cancer resided in a woman's brain, we may not find it. I mean, that to me is, that, that to me stops me on my track. That is so devastating to actually hear something like that. And, you know, we are in the 21st century. This is 2016. It's women need to step up. And you know something, I, I just really, as I was saying that, I, I, when I do these interviews, I get these uh, these images in my brain, and this is just how my brain works. And something just came, came to me that you know, giving birth is not—it's it, messy. Giving when a woman gives birth, it's messy. There's nothing 
perfect about it. However, the outcome is very miraculous and beautiful. And that's the same thing with women is women need to step up. There doesn't have to be anything perfect about stepping up. There doesn't have to be anything the most beautiful about stepping up. But stepping up and not stepping on another woman. Step up. Lean in. What's her name says from uh, Facebook? Uh, Cheryl, um, I forget her last name. (laughs) Thank you. You know, I mean... It, it's like it's leaning and 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 it's uh, and it's enough already. And, and Kate, I know Kate and I have had plenty of intimate conversations because Kate and I have been um, not victims because we're not victims, Kate. But we have nope. been um, uh, well products, for lack of a better word, of other women. Um, whatever was going on with them in, in that moment or that week or that month. Um, uh, come at us in an inst- a private message and tear us down. I mean, literally tear us down, which, you know, I'm going to say this. When you're in the midst of that, that's not us. It, it, and this is something very diff- This is something very hard to do is to be able to step back and step away and go, no, that's not me. That's them. That's that person going through whatever. That is not me. But for me personally, I will admit when I'm being attacked like that, it's very difficult to separate myself from that and not take that so personally. It is hard. <clears throat> it is, excuse me. It is hard to take, not take it personally. At the same time, you have to have this feeling and knowing that it's got absolutely nothing to do with you, that something is happening in their life and they don't know how yet to control their emotions. So they're projecting it out to some, on, on somebody else or somebody who's closer to them. And the, it's 2016. We all have to take responsibility for our businesses and we have to show up no matter what. I have had instances where um, my friends have died, where I've had issues with my kids where I've had major, major, major things going on. But there is never, ever a time where I direct that anger towards a client or direct that anger to somebody out there who's completely innocent in that situation and does not deserve that. I always consider it going, yep, this is my only crazy stuff. I'll get through it. I'll work my way through it. I'm not going to go take it out on somebody else. So we have to learn not to direct the, the anger to the person that it's not all about. Yeah, I agree. So, Anne, with your institute, what, uh, I mean, first of all, tell me, is this a year-long program or is this like a, I mean, how does it all work? Yes, so we have three levels, beginning with what we call aspiring leadership, which is a program designed for women who have one to five years in the workforce or are returning after having raised their families. And in this program, which is 12 modules, each takes three weeks to complete. So you have a 36-week program. We begin with a pre-assessment so that we can establish the benchmark of where our participants begin for each module. And then we do a post-assessment So we can demonstrate that they have actually learned what was intended during that module. And if they haven't, then they can take the module over again. Each module is organized into one of four pillars. The first pillar being all about communication, communication strategies, business writing skills, and how we interact in the world with other people. The second pillar is about personal power. It's about how you show up, how you maximize your impact by building on your strengths and ensure that you yourself are having the impact that you desire on the people around you. The third pillar is called business essentials. Now, if you don't understand how the business works, and some of us really avoided things like accounting, project management, processes. This pillar helps you, helps our participants to really get an overview of how the business, how every business works, and where they can deploy their talents, even if they don't feel that math or science or technology are their strengths. And the fourth pillar is 
the leadership pillar. This level, the Aspiring Leaders Program, focuses on self-leadership. The second level is called Emerging Leadership, and this builds on the aspiring level and is intended for women who have have been given or achieved some supervisory or management experience. So you're already working with other people. And it builds on the uh, foundation of the Aspiring Leaders Program in the same four pillars with the leadership pillar focused on team leadership. The third level is for those who are at the advanced level, who have been move to a director or a vice president, a general manager, even to the C-suite, who are leading organizations. And here we work on more of the skills that are required of those who lead larger bodies or groups of people, things like dealing with unexpected outcomes, dealing with the media, making presentations, working through your organization so that you can influence people to achieve greater productivity and performance. So those are the three levels that we have established. The curriculum is created by and delivered by women for women. And we know that women learn best from other women. So these, this is how we have organized our programs. We do offer scholarships to the Aspiring Leaders Program, and we have special relationships with some of the women's associations, associations that serve women who are in specialty areas, like mining and construction and trucking and technology. We have, we have special relationships with them where their members are entitled to a discount on the programming. So our listeners can check with their own associations or they can visit our website at acaciainstitute.com. That's A-C-A-C-I-A Institute, I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E dot com. And acacia is both a wonderful tree, the tree of life, and also a representation of the values of the Acacia Institute. Authenticity, collaboration, accountability, compassion, innovation, and ambition. Mm. I, 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 my next question, Anne, was going to ask how you came up with that beautiful name, and thank you for, very much for um, sharing that. But that is... It's, it's, first of all, we've got to get you out of Canada, which I do believe you are out of Canada, and, and this has got to spread worldwide. And, and I say that, I know you're traveling worldwide, but, you know, some of the things, like I said, that some of the things that Kate and I have butt up against working with some women is, I mean, I think this is greatly needed. I, I think as, as excelled as I am, and some days I'm not, I think I could even use a program like this. This is absolutely beautiful. Well, of course, we do want to serve the women of the world. And the aspiring leaders and the emerging leaders levels are both delivered through e-learning. We're using a state-of-the-art platform and combining it with interactive live webinar sessions to ensure that people have an opportunity to interact with one another. The level that you're at is the advancing leaders. We have our leadership mastery program is delivered in a five-day intensive retreat format. So in five concentrated days working with a small group of women leaders You will have the opportunity to learn from our founders, the founders of the Acacia Institute, plus hand-picked leaders, women leaders from other sectors who will come and share their experience and expertise. And at the close of those five days, you will have polished and honed your skills to a new level and leave with a new level of confidence 
and a new level of insight to how to deploy your leadership skills in your everyday life, in your family, and in your business. So we would welcome, welcome you, you both, to come and join us in October, October 16th through 21st, 2016, will be our first Leadership Mastery uh, program. And we're meeting in Niagara-on-the-Lake, which is not too far from you, Kim. No. Uh, about probably four hours if you drive, or a little bit less if you fly. And we're going to be at a fabulous vintage hotel, the Prince of Wales Hotel, for the duration. And I think it will be a lovely experience where women can take themselves out of their daily uh, environment and focus. We all know the power of focus. Focus on enhancing their own impact, their own skills, their own influence and their own um, ability to push their organization forward and to lead with the greatest level of power that they can bring to the assignment. Mm. Go ahead, Kate. I, I, I was going to take a deep breath. <laughs> I was going to speak then. I was like, who's going to speak? Who's going to speak? Um, what I was actually going to say is what I loved about the entire description of the um, Institute is the fact that there is accountability, accountability in there. And this is often something which is missing from a lot of coaching practice programs because people will sign up upon the program and there's nobody there to actually stand behind them and give them the kick up the butt so that they have deadlines or that they have to have this work done by or they don't have somebody saying have you done it yet have you completed it yet so what happens a lot is they procrastinate or they will find ways to self-sabotage so they don't have to do the work and to have that accountability is so so much it is it is everything it is between you starting the goal and finishing it accountability is a must so you know there's so many times i see that missing from what coaches teach and it's such a shame because that is the everything that is the from the beginning to the end of making this complete well, i appreciate you saying that kate and that was one of the keys that we we focused on when we established the curriculum and the process we also require that the participants prepare an action plan at the, at the close of each module that, will, that clearly lays out how they intend to apply what they've just learned. And they, we encourage those that are inside organizations to cultivate a mentorship relationship within their company, not their boss, but someone else in the organization that they can then discuss what they're learning and share that action plan and have another element of accountability built into their, their journey. We hold them accountable. They will not receive their certificate of completion for each module until they have completed all of the work and their post-assessment demonstrates that they have, in fact, made sufficient progress uh, in, in that particular module. So at, step by step, we're holding them accountable. And step by step, we are also encouraging them to bring their authentic selves into play and to collaborate with their, you know, their colleagues in the cohort. The compassion part comes in when we realize that in particular, you know, this is something women are good at and something that we're not good at. We're good at having compassion for those who have less, for children, for the elderly. We're not always good at having compassion for ourselves or for those that we may see as competition. And ambition is something that I would be willing to bet all of us were discouraged from being ambitious. We were potentially told that we were too bossy, that nobody likes a bossy girl. And we need to, you know, revive that ambition within women and sustain it so that you can achieve your own unique personal potential and bring every gift that you have to the world to make it a better place. 
Yeah, I, to- I totally, I, I, I totally, totally agree. And what inspired you? I mean, what was it that that you woke up one day and um, birthed th- this institute? What I mean, what was that leading point that not only is it necessary, not only do we need these tools, not only do we need the support um, for women out there um, in the leadership arena, um, you know, in business, returning to business, done raising kids, whatever. What what inspired you to birth this? Well, I think there was, it's been a long journey of cultivation, but in particular, I, I think I was very privileged in having created my own business and and operated it according to what I call a tribal culture and it was it's a safe place we all work together we can rely on each other we are our trust and respect and accountable and we're faith based in the sense that we have faith in one another And I may have been lulled into a false sense of security in thinking that really the the gender issue was no longer a gender issue. However, as my nieces and nephews began to enter the workforce and I began hearing their stories, I realized that actually not that much has changed from the time that when I entered the workforce. Some of the same things are happening, the same limitations, the same barriers, the same bad behaviors are occurring in the workplace that I experienced as a young woman. And I also realized that women are still holding themselves back. So yes, some systemic barriers have been aggressively torn down. We have you know, laws, legislation about equal pay for equal work and you know, so many isms are against the law even though they still occur. But what happens with women is that our confidence seems to be quite fragile. That we are unsure, that we are still holding ourselves back and worrying about that imposter syndrome. And when I realized that this generation, which is, my goodness, it's two generations past me, is still facing those same challenges, I felt an obligation to contribute in a way that was going to um, leverage my life experience in hopes that others could avoid the potholes, the cow patties, and the self-sabotage that I see going on. So that really was the impetus for making it happen now. It was kind of boiling on the back burner for much of my life that, you know, there would be a time when what I've learned would be of value to others, but it came to life in 2015 because it's time. Mm. I love that. Uh, I love that a lot. Will you please, and let everyone know, uh, once again, how they can get in touch with you? Well, I'll tell you, I would welcome your phone call on my toll-free line at 1-888-281-3074. I'll repeat that. 888-281-3074. 3074. You can go to the Acacia Institute website, acaiainstitute.com. You can find me on Facebook, it, and, and with an E, that's A N N E and minor with an E, M-I-N-E-R. In fact, I think if you Google Ann Minor, you probably will find my various websites. I have a website for myself as a speaker where the, my bold radio station episodes 
um, are all archived, as well as being archived on Bold Radio Station, of course, and uh, the Acacia Institute's website. And then there's my primary business, which is the Dunvegan Group, and you'll find me any of those places. And I would, I'm always happy when people reach out, and if I can be of service, whether it's to show you how our programs might be of benefit for you or point you in a direction if I'm not your ideal solution, then I'm happy to do that as well. Mm, I love that. And please, yes, check out Anne's. Um, the, the Institute is absolutely beautiful. Your logo is very pretty. And um, you render up some beautiful um, offerings and tips um, every Thursday at Bold Radio Station with your guests as, uh, as well. And I know Kate and I are very passionate about... Um, women in in leadership roles uh, you know and again it's like birth 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 can be messy and things like that when we show up in leadership roles it, we don't have to be completely perfect and picture perfect and this and that and this and that it's it's just, it's it's time for women to really step up and uh, and show up on on their terms and what that looks like and not step down on themselves, step down on others, kick down on others. It's really stepping up and, uh, and showing up, um, you know, whether we're dealing with aging parents or we're not dealing with aging parents and, and all the other things that goes along with, uh, life. So it, please get involved, uh, with the Institute. And yes, at Niagara on the Lake, and I heard is absolutely beautiful. I've never been up there, but I heard it's really pretty up there. Well, we'd love to have you join us. And in October, it will be, Canadian fall, <laughs> Canadian fall meaning we'll have fabulous colors of yellow and red and orange as, as the leaves on our maple trees turn. I know at some point in fall, I, I have, a, uh, I have a, a, a job to do in New York. Somebody's getting married, and I've been appointed as maid <laughs> of honor. <laughs> wow. I, I'm not quite sure. It's sometime in the fall. I'm going to clear the calendar, but um, that's a little under. It's Actually, it's truth, but it's a cute little underlying joke that we have going to as well. Um, Kate, do you have any um, – you and I are not done yet, but um, we're wrapping up here, the show. Any last part? words for Anne. I think she nailed it completely. Oh, Absolutely yeah. nailed it with so many strong um, values that need to go into overall coaching or overall mentorship. There is so much there because my entire career in the coaching world, I've always produced something that was always missing in other areas. So for you to actually just hit on every thing that needs to be placed across it is something that is i mean i'd encourage anybody to check you out because you have just hit on all the points that i teach and that i i, I speak over and over again till i'm blown in the face because i see them missing from so many areas of life well, yeah thank you kate that's high praise you're on both and- welcome and it's very true as well. And thank you uh, so much for um, joining us here today on some bold um, um, biz chats. I knew when I invited you on the show, an hour would not be enough with your um, very dynamic, um, diverse um, background. And like you said, the, the benchmark of the 30 years. Um, but it is so imperative and so important that um, women seek you out uh, f- you know, for your offerings of uh, women in leadership. And you you're traveling globally, um, stepping into this, representing this. Um, you're very, you're very um, uh, forthright coming of of leading all of this as well. And so you are definitely a woman to um, have some eyes on. Well, thank you so very much. It was lovely to chat with both of you, and I so appreciate the opportunity to join you for our conversation today. It's been um, it's been our pleasure. Thank you so much, Anne and um, Kate. We are just about at the uh, uh, top of the hour. It went by way too fast, as usual. I do. I know it always does because we just get lost. We get lost in this great conversation and this is how it should be with everybody when you're in collaboration and when you're working together. You get lost in such great conversation and powerful conversations as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I want every woman to understand out there to know that, first of all, number one, she's not alone. You are never alone because there are so many of us that have walked that walk um, and are talking that walk and have implemented footsteps in the sand or the concrete or you know whatever you know whatever the grass wherever whatever um, um, foundation and that there are other women to turn to that is very it's very safe and it's very uh, um, sacred because I know a lot of women are still a little angst and hesitant to um, walk into a room full of women you know um, uh, I, I just spoke at an event in May in Rochester New York and one of the requests I asked we all had 40 minutes 20 minutes of talking and then we left 15 to 20 for the women to do work as a group at their tables and stuff and I asked all of them to speak it at the, you know, to speak it at their table, even if they hear that, I call that, you know, that ego, that, you know, that voice in the head, that hag in the head, hag is going, ooh, you can't say that. Those other women will think that you are a loser or you're not making it or something. To still speak it. And so what if other women are, first of all, we can't even tell what the other women are thinking because we're not mind readers, but so what? We all have got to implement. We all have to lead. If we want change, we have to lead it. You know, we have to put the water out. We have to plant the seeds, so to speak. We have to lay the footsteps, the footprints down into the beach or the sidewalk or the grass, whatever, um, in order for others to, and I don't even say, want to even say follow, but come walk alongside of me. You know, I mean, life is life, you know, and owning a business, we have the ebb and flows, the ups and downs and the ins and outs, and we all have been there. Don't think like you have to do it alone. Do not think like that. And don't give up hope, by the way, because when one thing is not working, there's always other things that you can realign to make things work. And there's some beautiful women out there, like my, like our guest Anne and like yourself, Kate, that have been through things that can support and help. Maybe just be a shoulder to cry on for a minute, or maybe it's a sounding board or something, or it's a service that um, we all provide that to reach out and don't be afraid to reach out, reach out. Yeah, definitely. So Miss Kate, um, before we depart, will you please let everybody know how they can all get in touch with you as well? And how they can send me cake and sweets and chocolates. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Right, yeah. <laughs> My website. If you'd like to get in touch with me, I am across Facebook under Kate Gardner. I have a page and a profile. You can message either one and I will answer you personally. I do my own social media. Or you can visit my website to find out more about the magazine at www.themissingpeacemagazine.com. And if you'd like to know further information about the book that me and Kim are compiling, because it is the last one this year, and it is a total opportunity for you, yourself, to be a published author and join us on this mission to really tell people how it is in business in the online industry do reach out to myself or do reach out to kim for further details yeah we're going to write that book um let let's no, there's no holding back so this is not for the faintest of hearts so to speak in this book um and we are only going to have it will be kate and i and 15 others so it won't be a large group like some of our past books that we've been in so the chapters will be a tad bit longer and um it's all women sharing you know their um their their trials and tribulations turned opportunities mm-hmm. and bigger opportunities and bigger opportunities in the blood, sweat and tears and the joys that we get, you know, to, to arrive to the joys. And again, it's a book that we don't want anyone to ever feel like that they have to give up. And, you know, some of the things that Kate and I um, personally have gone through um, in business and stuff. So, you know, we all have it. We all have our stories and they need to be told and they need to be told so elegantly and beautifully as well. So um, reach out. Um, you can get track me down at www.kimbeasandboysmith.com or boldradiostation.com. Please tune in to Bold Radio Station. We've got some dynamic um, hosts with a lot of dynamic guests and uh, shows. So swing on by. If you can't make the live time, good God, we record these. They turn into podcasts and you can go and uh, listen to them on demand when you're folding laundry or maybe driving home from somewhere, whatever. So join us right back here again, same time, same place next week week and get out there and um, be bold everybody ladies step up and be bold and thanks Kate you're welcome it's been a pleasure thank you
Uh-huh. Make it a great day, everybody.